Welcome to this video lecture on column family databases using HBase. In previous videos, we've talked about the five genres of database management systems, relational, column family, document, graph, and key value databases. And we mentioned that there's a question that often gets asked, well, what type of database should I use for my new project? And the answer is, of course, well, it depends. It depends on what it is you're trying to do. And there are a number of questions we can ask and answer to help guide the decision of what database is going to be the most appropriate for a given business problem. So throughout this semester, we're going to be looking at each of these questions for each of the databases that we use. In this video, we're going to be focusing on Apache HBase. So, what type of database is HBase? Well, it's a column family database, and it's one that makes strong guarantees on consistency, much like a relational database management system. Now, why have column family databases and HBase been developed? Well, there was a driving need for dealing with big data. And uh, this all came out of Google when uh, Google introduced their big table architecture. And of course, Google is kind of the biggest name in big data and a lot of other companies have big data needs too. So that's driven the development of tools such as uh, Apache HBase and Apache Cassandra. You interact with HBase uh, using tools like Ruby and Java and JavaScript, and we can query it through Hive using Hive query language. Some unique things about HBase are its tight integration with the Hadoop infrastructure. So it's just kind of inherently tied in with Hadoop and uh, HDFS and many of the other tools that we'll usually find in the Hadoop uh, infrastructure. It has a great ability to handle very, very large data and has a lot of nice features built into it around uh, versioning and storing metadata with the values themselves. Now, HBase has amazing performance when we're dealing with very large data sets. However, when we start working on smaller questions and smaller queries, we'll actually find that HBase can be outperformed by a regular relational database management system in some contexts. So HBase is really about big data and big problems. It's not for, a, not for small tasks. And kind of to that end, how does it scale? Well, the conventional wisdom is that a production HBase cluster should be made up of no fewer than five servers or five nodes. So when you start scaling up and scaling out, there's virtually no limit to how large HBase can get. However, it doesn't do as well when you try to scale it down or make it smaller. Now, a little bit of information about column family databases in general, and I have to warn you, this may be the most kind of tricky and confusing thing we talk about uh, throughout this entire semester. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, column family databases share a lot of terminology with relational databases, and at a glance, they look very similar. But when you start getting into the inner workings, they are in fact very different. So it can kind of lull you into a false sense of security with the familiar terminology. So don't let that happen to you. And the second problem you're going to encounter is there is a relational database management system technique known as the column store that people frequently kind of conflate with column family. And in fact, a lot of the same terminology like columnar, column oriented and column store get used kind of interchangeably on the web to describe both column family and column store databases. So when you start Googling things, you might find that people are either mixing up the two or they're kind of combining the two. And uh, just to add to the confusion, some of the configuration in a column family database can make it work in some ways like a column store database. Uh, but the end goal of these two technologies is actually uh, quite different as we'll come to find. Just to give a quick overview of the differences in column family databases and column store databases, column family databases are based on Google's big table structure. So data is stored and accessed in rows. We call this a row store. And column family databases are really optimized for answering questions about a row. Okay, and some column family databases include Bigtable, HBase, which we're talking about in this class, and Cassandra. 
Now, column store databases, on the other hand, are relational and primarily used for data warehouse applications, and your data is stored and accessed at the column level instead of by rows. So these databases are optimized for answering questions about a single attribute or about a small number of attributes. And some examples of this type of database management system are Sybase IQ, CStore, Vertica, and MonetDB. So what do we really mean by row store versus column store? Well, in a traditional relational database management system, all values in a row are stored and accessed together and values are read horizontally by the row. So if we had this uh, table here and wanted to answer the question, what is the average balance for the region south? Well, in a traditional relational database management system, each row is going to be scanned and we're looking for a value of south for region. So the first uh, couple of rows, it's not true. Uh, but then we have some rows here where the value of region is south. So we're going to take the values of our uh, balance for these tuples. And then for the rest, it's not. So once we've identified the tuples that fit this criteria, then we take the average of the values for balance. Okay, that's the traditional row store relational database management system. In a column store database, the values of the attribute instead of the row are stored and accessed together, and values are read vertically by the attribute. So when we ask the same question, what's the average balance for the south region, we vertically scan just this attribute region and identify tuples that have a value of south. And then once we've identified the tuples, we read the value of balance only for those tuples and get the average. So for this particular case, our column store architecture would be much faster, right? But if we had questions that needed multiple attributes from the same row, we're going to find that we actually take a performance hit on that. So the column store approach can be very fast and beneficial when we're interested in just a single attribute or a small number of attributes, and then also has some really nice benefits around data compression. However, we'll find that we may actually take a performance hit if we need to access multiple attributes in the same record. Okay, so the column store database isn't what we're going to be talking about in this class, but I do want to make sure that we clear up the difference in column store and column family uh, to alleviate any possible confusion down the road. So in a column family database, which is the focus of this class, uh, we define a very loose schema of column families when we define a table. So in this case, we have a row key and three column families customer details, relatives, and accounts. So our row key is the unique identifier that we use to access a row, but I'll point out to you that customers all have different attributes or column family qualifiers within each column family. Some customers have a nickname, some customers have a maiden name, customers can have different types of phone numbers like their mobile phone, their home phone, or even a, a fax number if they're stuck in 1998. Customers can have a, a variety of different types of accounts like checking accounts, savings account, their uh, business accounts. And also notice we have some instances where we have sparse data. We have some attributes that only a few customers have a value for. And this is something that relational databases really struggle with when we have a lot of null values. However, column family databases really excel at this. And this is just baked into their architecture, uh, being able to deal with sparse data. And whenever we want data about a customer, we're able to get it and we're able to get everything without even knowing what data we're storing about a customer. So this is kind of the real value of a column family database. And we'll talk about all this, of course, in much greater detail in the coming videos. So speaking of the coming videos, here's our agenda for the next uh, two videos in this series. In video 4.1, we're going to be looking at how we create, read, update, and delete data in HBase, so our four actions of data management. And then in video 4.2, we'll kind of extend how we're looking at reading data by looking at scan filtering in HBase. So here we go.